Hey Traveler family, it's Big Phil Proctor and have I got a travel destination for you located in the North Georgia mountains. It's called the Fox Fire Museum and Heritage Center. It's an outdoor museum and y'all know I enjoy being outdoors, but I never had an idea what it would be like to take a tour of an outdoor museum. It all began in 1966 when a group of high school students wanted to take their English class outside of the classroom. It came about as part of the Fox Fire Magazine clan. Students were out interviewing people, preserving their culture and heritage, and, and all along the people were giving them items to store, preserve for future generations. So the students needed a place to, to house those things and display them, and, and they came up with this idea to create this village that we're at. And it's evolved into the museum that, that we're at today. Consisting of approximately 20 plus cabins, the Fox Fire Museum and Heritage Center takes you back in time and offers a unique perspective into Southern Appalachian living in the 1800s. Notice that it's, it's dark because there was no electricity back then and there weren't windows. Right, in the early 1800s around here you couldn't get glass. So houses were built without windows, so it's very dark in there. People would use candles and of course a fireplace. Alright, so what is this cabin that we're walking up on now? This is our wagon shed. The wagon shed. We store two of our wagons in it. The one on the right there is we call it Judd Nelson Wagon, and it was made by Judd Nelson for Foxfire. Okay. He made the entire thing himself. He was a master blacksmith. Many different individuals donated the hand planes that you saw down there, uh, the shaving horses. Some of them were actually made for Foxfire and then donated as, as part of an article. Uh, the draw knives and saws and augers were all donated various people throughout the years. You get a lot of students that come up here. How do you keep their attention? Well, we, we try to get them engaged with some hands-on activities. Uh, we do the laundry. We have tools that they use. Uh, we have toys that they play with in our uh, folk art gallery. So giving them things that they can handle and touch and use gives them more sense of how people used to do things. Now, I'm a hands-on kind of guy, and it was time to get my hands on something. Okay, Barry, you finally got me in here. I see a lot of tools, I see a lot of wood, and I see, what is this? Well, this is our shaving horse, and that's a draw knife sitting there. We use the draw knife on the shaving horse. I'd like to try this and see what it was like back in the 1800s. And try it is what I did. I also took a whack at becoming a blacksmith. <sighs> okay, so I dropped a few. <laughs> This is soft coal, and it helps get our wood going and then our coal going. We're getting ready. You work the metal, you heat it up so it's soft. And when it's soft, you shape it. That's the process you're doing all day. Okay. Well, you know what? We've had a good time in the blacksmith shop. I still want to go see more. Okay. Our next stop on this quarter mile trail was the broom maker and the village weaver, it was exciting to watch these two talented, skillful women perfect their art. Now with all the hard work these folks had going on back then, you had to amuse yourself in some kind of way. I found a pair of stilts and I couldn't leave without trying them on for size. I know the Temptations used to do a dance, but I'm gonna try to do it on these stilts. There's a da, 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 so if you're traveling north on 985 towards North Georgia, stop by the Fox Fire Museum and Heritage Center for some great history and some old school fun. That's it, McPhillip, I'm out. <laughs>